Hey everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. And if you haven't been following us for the past year, you can typically find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we've explored a number of countries around the world, we've kind of noticed a few things that are a little bit different to what we're accustomed to in Canada and the UK. The reason that we have this channel is to document our experiences, but also to help inspire others to wish to travel more. But we don't just want to stop there. We also want to try and help people to get more comfortable with what each country is going to be like and what they can expect from the countries that they want to visit if they happen to overlap with us. So with that, this video is going to be relaying some tips and tricks from one of the countries that we have been to in the hopes that we can provide you with some useful knowledge and help make navigating a little bit easier for you. Today's video is going to focus on our travels through Croatia. If you've been watching our videos, then you'll know that we traveled to Zagreb, Plitvice, Zadar, Split, and Dubrovnik. So some of these tips and tricks are going to focus on some of these cities specifically, but others are just going to be about the country as a whole. We hope that you find these useful. The great thing that we have experienced with the two countries that we ended up going to prior to Croatia is that they have free running water, which is potable so that you can drink it and you can fill up your water bottles as you wish but also there is free Wi-Fi in the major cities to make navigation around that extra bit easier. And thankfully, Croatia follows suit. So in any of the major cities that you find yourself in Croatia, then you have access to free drinking water and free Wi-Fi. Just as we found in Italy and Slovenia, there were free walking tours available in all of the major cities in Croatia, and we took full advantage of this and we recommend that you do the same. On the food front, for the more budget conscious among you who may want to be going and getting groceries instead, then we have great news for you in the sense that Croatian groceries are pretty affordable. So as far as that goes, if you are wanting to lower your costs on eating, then this is a great way to do it. It is also worth noting that there are also really cheap gelato places as well as bakeries where you can also make back a buck or two. However, if you are really wanting to immerse yourself in the Croatian cuisine, then there are definitely experiences available to you for that as well. Our recommendation is to go to a konoba, which is the Croatian word for a tavern. And these are typically family-run, very cute little restaurants which provide you with pretty much the full slate of the best of Croatian cuisine. Our recommendations, based on what we tried, were black risotto, which is a risotto made with squid ink. Absolutely delicious. There's another one called pasticciada, which is a meat dish. And the other one is an octopus salad. All of those we found were absolutely wonderful and thankfully in the Canovas that we went to then they were pretty affordable as well. Zagreb, which is the capital of Croatia, has the highest number of museums per capita in the entire world. This essentially means that there are hundreds of museums that you could choose to explore while you're there. Our personal favorites were the Museum of Broken Relationships as well as the Chocolate Museum, but as I mentioned, you have a huge selection and we highly recommend them because the two that we went to were absolutely fascinating. When we then moved on from Zagreb to Plivica, it was a little bit interesting because there were flood warnings and there were a lot of weather conditions that meant that certain parts of the national park that we went to Plivica for were closed off to us. So it is worth noting that outside of the national park, Plivica is only small, like very, very tiny little village. And there really isn't a massive amount to do unless you can get outside. So it really is worth checking the weather reports before you go to make sure that you get the absolute best experience while you're there. 
We then moved on to Zadar, and Zadar is a very small city, and you can walk from end to end in 15, 20 minutes at most. However, it's definitely worth going because there are a plethora of restaurants, cafes, and shops that you can take advantage of. And there's also the marina, the sea, which is a beautiful view, as well as the unique sea organ. After Zadar, it was then time to move on to the gorgeous city of Split. The major attraction there, of course, is Diocletian's Palace, which is an ancient Roman palace that is still mostly standing even today. Because of the fact that it is such a tourist hotspot, then of course it's incredibly popular and there are multiple different parts that you can go and explore at your leisure. However, it is worth noting that you do have to pay for certain parts of them. We opted to get a pretty comprehensive ticket and probably paid a bit more than we should have for it to go and explore various different parts to make sure that we got the most out of the day. However, what we found was actually some of them were a little bit more worth it than the other ones. So if it were up to us, we would have gone back and only really done the bell tower because of the view of the rest of the palace and the city, and of course the sub-levels because they are fascinating, and they're also part of one of the sets for Game of Thrones, so any Game of Thrones fans out there, that would be your dream ticket. One of the really unique free events that happens in Split is there is free music in the peristyle of Diocletian's Palace at 8 p.m. every night. And what we did was we bought a little bit of wine, I believe, mm -hmm. beer maybe for you, mm -hmm. and we went to the grocery store and grabbed some food that we could take as a picnic, and we just sat in the square of the peristyle and enjoyed our alcohol and dinner while listening to some free live music. It's worth noting that there are restaurants that border the square so that you can go for a sit down meal and enjoy the music, but what a really nice thing to be able to enjoy for free. Another major draw of Split for any Game of Thrones fans out there is Cliss Fortress. Though to be honest with you, even if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, it's still really cool and it's an amazing setting where the views are just unparalleled. It really is worth going. There are regular bus services that do go from the center of Split up there. It is three euros each way per person. So just make sure that you budgeted for that before you go. Dubrovnik is probably most famous for being a walled city and the ability to walk on the walls. That's probably their biggest tourist attraction. We actually doubted whether we should do it initially because it is quite expensive, but let me tell you from having done it, it's so worth it. But a great little trick is that if you buy the Dubrovnik Pass, that pass gives you access to a number of other tourist attractions, and it's about the same price as if you only pay to walk the walls. So our advice is to get the pass so you not only have access to the walls but a number of other tourist attractions because it offers the best value for money. It is also worth bearing in mind that everything that is within the walls is very, very expensive and significantly more so than outside of the walls. So if you are wanting to be a bit more budget conscious but still want a really nice experience, then the further away from the city walls you get, the cheaper you will find things. However, it is worth noting also that outside the walls, there are a lot of hills. We were pretty exhausted going more or less anywhere once we left the walled city because if you wanted to go anywhere, you went up a hill. If you wanted to come back home, you still went up a hill. So just be prepared for a bit of a workout if you are going to come to this city. If you have time, and even if you don't have time, you should make time to go to the Red Museum in Dubrovnik. It's just outside of the city walls, and it details Croatia's communist history. 
but it's done in a really interactive manner because there are a lot of dioramas which portray daily life for families living in the communist era in Croatia. It is absolutely fascinating. It hadn't been on our list. We put it on our list because we had extra time to kill. And now we're saying, make the time to go to the Red Museum. It's not even that expensive. If you want a little taster of what it was like, then you should watch our video when we go to the Red Museum so you know what you would be missing out on if you don't go. And that is the list that we have for Croatia. We hope that you have found this really, really useful for your travels to Croatia or any of the cities within it. It is, again, another magnificent country. We absolutely loved it and cannot extol the virtues of going there enough. However, we do recognize that this is not an exhaustive list. So if you have any other recommendations yourself, then feel free to put them in the comments below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.